Very welcome, Sinead Ryan. I want to start with you. You're all about consumers. Your programme is starting on RT, I know, on, on Wednesday night. My Money and Me um, at half past eight. What's going to be in this program for government? Some of it has been leaked for consumers. What's in it for us? Yeah, well, well, the program that, that I'll be um, uh, uh, involved with from, from next Wednesday is looking at small little ways that families can get a grip on their finances and learn how to do things a little bit different with a big result. And this program for government is written, I think, in a very aspirational way. Um, it's, it's a very positive document. There's lots in it that sounds great. And I would pick up that last speaker in terms of the housing. The housing issues alone um, are, are really uh, groundbreaking if they come to pass. However, most of the changes that are positive cost absolutely nothing. You know, they were free changes, like the fact that you have now a Minister for Housing that we never had in, entirely in charge of it. That's a free measure that's going to actually make a big difference and bring this front and centre. How do we know it's going to make a difference, though? Well, sorry, we're, this is all predicated on whether, A, they're going to stick to the programme for government, B, that there are some bones behind it to back it up. What we have here is very... Um, a kind of a broad brushed document. There's lots in it that is deeply unsatisfactory. For instance, the section on Irish water, which maybe you didn't want to bring up tonight, um, says things like there's a line in it that says Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael will continue to differ in their policy. Now, what's that? Well, we do is want to talk like about Irish water, because really we want, we want to talk yeah. about what's coming down the track for people who live in this I country. Know. And so Irish water is yeah. really important. Well, like, well, that whole do section, you pay your bill now? Well, that whole section doesn't make that clear at all. So it has this fuzzy wuzzy statement about, you know, Irish water, well, we're going to kind of pack it off to a committee for five months and then it'll come back and it'll go into another committee for three months and by then we all hope it'll go away and something will have been done. So there is no guarantee that those who've paid will get a refund or, or conversely, equally good, that those who haven't paid will be pursued. So they've left it all hanging in the air. And then there are other proposals to do with schools, although there's not much in education in it, and particularly housing. Um, that seems to be very specific, really concrete measures that are going to help people in arrears, that are going to help first-time buyers get on the property ladder because that still seems to be government policy uh, not not dealing so much with the rents uh, there's increases to um, the HAP payment uh, so so they're concrete things but it's caught up in this overall like an optimistic view of the world that if they had 10 years and 10 billion quid they could probably manage most of it mm -hmm. as it is we have an indeterminate number of months or years and, and a lot less money than that. So, so an optimistic it, I can't melange, see how it is that what you're saying? All be met. Okay. Um, but, but let's hope the good bits are. Can we just maybe address the, the water issue? Um, you're both very welcome. Are you very upset that water charges have been left hanging like that, that people don't know whether they're going to pay them or not and what's going to happen and we're going to have this commission? Well, you know, to, 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 to sort of pawn it, it, it's dead in the water. I, I cannot see what a charge is being reintroduced. That they'll keep the, the, the entity itself, because giving it back to, to local authorities doesn't make any sense. I think nearly everyone agrees with that. But the, the political grief that's gone around water charges, it seems to me that it's going to be impossible, even with a very strong government of the big majority, to be able to reintroduce water charges. So it's, it's pretty much dead. So it'll and be that, coming from general taxation? And it'll go back, and that'll, have a, that'll narrow the so -called, that infamous fiscal space further, so that'll have a knock-on effect. But it certainly seems, you know, if I, were, if I were a betting man, I certainly would put a lot of money to say that there will be no, that, that the, the charges won't come back. They've just been such, you know, there's been such almost unprecedented political grief over them. Stephen Donnelly, did you pay your, your water bill? No, I didn't. Um, but I, I put my hands up. I didn't. It's not magically going to go away, you know. That's what no, Regina Doherty said I today. I, so I, I didn't not pay it um, as some sort of principal stand, right? Did you forget? I, I kind of forgot. I've, kind of, I've got three young kids in a political party and, and, and a job. But no, I, of course I could have paid it. Um, and I think in time I probably would have. But I had to sit through, as did Paul, the arrogance and the bullying and the guillotines and all of that stuff. I had a lady come in to me when Phil Hogan said, if you don't pay, we're going to turn it down to a trickle. And she said, um, she doesn't have an extra 100 euro. I was a pensioner. She doesn't have an extra 100 euro at the end of the year. So she came into the office to say, will she be able to wash herself and wash her dishes with a trickle, right? So. I got so, and that's just not, you, you can't treat people like that. So Irish water was not just about Irish water. It was a lightning rod for a lot of people who got behind something to say, we are sick and tired of being bullied and condescended 
and pushed around and for a lot of vulnerable people really badly hurt by the orthodoxy of the last government. And water charges was, was almost the last stand and the people held okay, but even and they if, held well but so, even sorry, Stephen, so the, the reason, but the reason I didn't pay was I was just so sick of the whole thing okay, that so I just said I'm not giving them the, you, the pleasure you didn't like you know? the, the, the Irish water institution and how they were doing their business even if you accept all of that and they're, they're probably I think the Fine Gael would even accept that they should have had ability to pay in there hmm. You have to accept that we have a problem now paying for our water infrastructure and the improvements that are needed. And what do we do about that? Yeah, so we, we, we do have a problem, but we have a problem whether or not we charge for water because the total amount of money raised out of domestic water charges covers the cost of raising the money. So it doesn't pay for the water and it doesn't pay for the infrastructure. Here's what happened. Irish Water came together as a single entity. That's a good idea. The engineers have been doing a very good job in fixing leaks and fast-tracking things like uh, uh, water treatment in my own constituency in Arklow. They're doing a bunch of good things. Headroom in the Dublin area, I think, has gone from 2% to 16%. So the engineers are doing the right work. And there are clearly advantages of going from 34 dispersed organisations to one. But not a penny paid out in domestic water charges has been used to upgrade the system. And yet the system is being upgraded. Why is the system being upgraded? A, general taxation, and B, Irish water have been reducing costs and borrowing. But they are borrowing on balance sheet. Okay. So if Irish water is borrowing on balance sheet, the Irish state can borrow on balance sheet as well. So okay. water charges have basically been about a billion euro uh, fit of arrogance from, from the last government. Should people get their money back, those who did Absolutely pay? Absolutely they should. Yeah. Dan? Yeah. Well, I think people have to be treated equally. Uh, it's, it's, so you, know, you it's, paid your bill. Yeah, well, do you I think want if your anybody, money back? If anybody, you know, I, I think people have paid... If, if you, you, you send a signal then that for people don't... You break the law and people who are compliant with the law uh, are punished. You, you just can't have that. So I think, you know, if so we're going to do away with do you expect to get your money yes. back? You paid your bill. I, that, I would expect everyone who's paid to get the money back. Sinead, yeah. you, I assume you paid your bill. I paid my bill and I am an advocate of water charges per se, polluter pays principle, but I cancelled my direct debit last week. Okay. And, You're smiling, and, and, you know, that might, that might seem like hypocrisy and, I, and it is. But I was so annoyed at the obfuscation and the lack of clarity surrounding what was going to happen, this behemoth, this entity that shouldn't have existed in the first place. So I have paid. I probably won't get a refund. Um, and I'm not paying now. Okay. You should get your money back, though, surely, Sinead. Well, I, sorry, it has to be one or the other. Either everybody gets the money back or those that haven't paid are chased to a certain point in time when they, when they suspended the charges. Okay. And Paul, are you happy now that we all might be asked, asked for extra taxation to pay for the water infrastructure? Well, I think Stephen explained it very well, that water charges don't raise any money to invest in water infrastructure. So we, we need to invest more. We need to invest more than Irish Water envisages in their strategic plan of investing. And it's a question of where is that money going to come from? Should it have come from a regressive tax that hits the bottom 10%, takes 2% of their income, takes 0.2% of the top 10%, or should it come from progressive taxation? Look at the Panama Papers today. Should some of these people be paying more tax? That's the real question here. I would say to people, people who are on direct debit, they can go into their banks now, and if money has left their account in the last eight weeks, they can get the money back simply by requesting it. And the more people that cancel, the better, the sooner that Irish water and water charges can be killed off. Okay, I think we have someone here who has paid a bill and doesn't want the money back and expects everybody else to pay. Over on this side, yes. Uh, Geraldine Gregan here. Hi, I'm Geraldine. from the rural constituency of Clare, where many people pay for their water for years. Uh, good water costs, okay? <laughs> like, rural people... Uh, have to bore for their own wells, you know, that costs, they have to set up a system to purify the water. We have water schemes throughout Ireland to produce good water. Um, so, if, like, there's a talk of fairness right through the political system. So, good water costs, so we pay towards it. We have a separate entity, like we have electricity board for electricity, and we pay it. Well, I what think about, it works sorry, out can, I just, can, can I just put the sorry. point that, that Stephen made earlier on, that the money that was raised by Irish Water just went to pay for the cost of sending out the bills? Yes, but in time it would level off. Like, when you set up Irish Water, the idea, uh, measure water, in the first instance, that was the original idea. Uh, sort out our leaks, sort out the cryptosporidium and all the other uh, impurities in water. 
and then you have a good Irish water system. Think okay. of it from the point of view of selling to a foreign investment. You know, people that want to come in and build factories. You know, good water system, a system. Okay, you, you're, water. you're a member of Fine Gael, Jordan, is I that right? I am, right? yes. Okay. But it, just, just to, despite just to that, I'm also a food scientist. You know, logic as well as everything else, okay. I believe. Right. You know, Paul, but I am involved in Fine Gael. I do. See that there is no relationship between charging for water and getting investment in water infrastructure. Not necessarily. We, we have to have investment in water infrastructure. That's absolutely agreed. But it, when water charges were introduced, actually people even who aren't connected to domestic water services provided by Irish Water also lost out because at the same time the government cut the subsidy to group water schemes, which they're saying in the context of this will be reversed. We're for everybody getting access to free, free at point of usage quality uh, water and paying through progressive taxation. The other very important point here that I think is lost a little bit is it's exactly water, it's not just about the water charges. This is the first significant victory of people power against austerity since the crisis hit in 2008 and that has changed Irish politics I think fundamentally. It means that we have a weak government now and it means that people will feel confident about mobilising on the key questions that affect people, on the questions of housing, on the questions of abortion rights, on the question of wages and conditions. Okay. Mobilising and achieving victories like we've done on the and water charges. We want to charges. talk about some, some of those issues in a moment, uh, Paul. But Geraldine, do you want to re respond to Paul? Paul, um, good quality costs and it has to be paid for. Agreed. You know? But should so we pay for it or should the big corporations pay for it? Should Google pay for it? Should no, the people we, who we have the Panama account, should they be paying for it? As citizens of Ireland, we pay for our water. In the same way we pay for electricity, it's a service, it's a utility, it's worth it, you know, uh, and it costs but we, we do pay. I mean, the water that we've been getting for years and years and years, it's paid for out of all of our taxation. But it's not, go it's not good water. Not good there are leaking correct. pipes, be be there's, there's iron in the water, there, there are, it's, it's poisoned correct. in and some no, places. And nobody cared. Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, nobody cared nobody until they came to introducing you. water charges. The and so the point is, it's, yeah. they the, underfunded the scandal, our water investment. It, it actually, Geraldine, is, is, Paul is absolutely right. A, a, we, we've all paid for it for years, right, through motor tax and through VAT. But the real scandal is, A, there hasn't been the investment that's been needed, and B, we actually pay twice as much for our water as they do in Northern Ireland, right? So the fact that 34 systems have been allowed to do their own thing, and there have been boil wa water notices in Roscommon and raw sewage being pumped into the river in Arklow and all over the country, not only have we been paying for our water for the last several decades, we've actually been paying twice as much per person as they are in the north. And so, well, we got so, that 100 euro back. Yeah, but, but this yeah, is before I, the charges. Yeah, okay, Sorry, Steve, Steve, just, if I can, just, just, finish, if I can just, just, just finish on this quick, quick, quick point. So for me, as someone who used to be a consultant, if the, if, if the situation you find is we have a rubbish system and we're paying twice as much for that as our neighbours, the answer to that is fix the system. You've obviously got enough money to do that already. It's not charge on top of. Already so fix the system top. and then bring in charges. No, okay. just lower the costs and, and reinvest the money. Make, Dan. Point. In 28 countries in Europe, we use per person more water than anyone else. We're also the only country that doesn't charge for consumption. Now, I don't think you're going to deny there's a link between those two things. You there, think that we use loads of water because we, up to now we haven't had Because charges. it's free. Okay, so what I would say is let's turn this around and say we let's make, electricity, let's we, make I mean, electricity free. Okay, do you think people would use, would we, would we leave the lights on more, would we not pay attention to it, would we have appliances that, that use more electricity? Of course we would. The minute you bring in a medical card for under sixes, you get more under sixes going to the doctor. They're not sicker. True. There's they are two, being brought. There's, there's of course two, there's a direct correlation two between free water though. and using water. There, there's two relevant points. Though. First, the elasticity of consumption is about 10%, right? So yes, we would use less, but we wouldn't use an awful lot less. The amount Stan, of are you denying that we use more than any other of the 28 I, I, countries in the European Union? Maybe well, that's I because of the, the leaks. Is that because of the leaks? Well, it, again, because oh, there's no incentive for where? people to say, hey, there's something wrong. If you had your gas leak and your gas is leaking, you, you, you see something goes wrong, your bill goes up, you call them up, you get on to, and, and deal with it. But if you have no mechanism where anybody has got any incentive to find out about leaks, to identify leaks, that is why we use more water than anyone else. No, it's, it's not. Like fundamentally, it's not right. We, we don't have, unlike but many other countries, we, do, we don't have dual flush. But you agree? Because, in but there's countries. no incentive. But no, but 
the government could have introduced at many stages in the past building regulations that yeah. would have had an uh, impact on water sure. conservation, as exists in other European mm. countries. We could have had grey water harvesting, we could have had rainwater harvesting, we could have had dual flush toilets. We can have the all of those things anyway. But the government didn't do that because it would, it would have interfered with the profits of the developers who fundamentally Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are connected to. And like that, the, the use of water by big agriculture, the use of water by big business, you know, the amount, if, if water, if there are no water charges, your average person at home isn't just going to like randomly leave the tap on for no particular reason. Well, let's give an example. During, during, the winter, well. during the winter, if there's a risk, your, your pipes are going to freeze and you say it's going to cost me, I'd flood the house, huge amount of damage caused, it will be expensive. Look, I'm just going to leave the tap on I, and the tap will run all night. I, it's a I perfectly logical, rational thing for somebody to do that when you've got cold weather and you don't pay for water. You know, you simply can't deny that there's a link that if we abolished electricity charges, mm. that we wouldn't use more electricity. We would. But there's two very important differences in Ireland. Ireland is almost unique in the world when it comes to water in two ways. A, we don't use aquifers. So if you're in a country where you're digging your water out of the ground from a finite resource, it's really important that you're careful about how much water you use to brush your teeth or leave the, leave the tap on. In Ireland, we collect it. Uh, in Wicklow and in other big puddles. And but it's still so we, we important. We collect it's still important. It, it is. But the second thing we do is about 30% thir of the world's energy, I'm told, is used to pump water. So if you're in America or Germany or somewhere, okay. there's a big environmental argument that says you've got to pump water across flat land. We collect it in places like Wicklow and flow it downhill. So we may use more. I haven't seen the data. But in a way, it's okay that we use more. Okay, we're going to leave that one there because we have lots of other topics that we want to uh, address because we are looking forward to the programme for government. We want to know what's going to be in there. Will it be enough? Father Peter McVerry uh, is with us. You're very welcome, Peter. Uh, good to see you. So we are, have a housing minister. <laughs> we have a housing minister now uh, in Simon Coveney. Are you hopeful that things will start moving? I think a housing minister on its own will make no difference. Uh, I think the failure of the last government was that the different departments and agencies, all of whom have a key role in solving the housing crisis, uh, didn't cooperate with the Minister for the Environment, with Alan Kelly. Alan Kelly had a blueprint. Minister for Finance wouldn't go along with it. Minister for Social Protection wouldn't go along with it. The local authorities wouldn't go along with it. I think a Minister for Housing on his own is going to find his hands tied. I think what we need to do is declare a national emergency, because I believe this is a national emergency. We need to get all the relevant parties around the table. We need to agree on a plan, and everybody has to work off the one plan. Well, so until not a, that not a, happens, we're going to have every, yeah. all the different departments going off on their own, having their own policies, having their own priorities, and housing will not get adequately Did addressed. we not, though, straight after the election, have a cross-party committee on housing? Has that moved anything along? Well, we do, and it's still meeting, and we wait to see what the outcome is. However, it's the recommendations have to be implemented, and that's where it may well fail, uh, fall down. I don't believe that we have, I don't see any sign uh, that we have recognised either the, the extent of this problem, because the problem is going to get much, much worse with mortgage arrears coming down the line, and the vulture funds coming down the line. I don't think we have realised the extent of this problem or the urgency of dealing with this problem. Certainly the last government, all that they did didn't even slow down the rate of increase in homelessness. Is there a quick fix though? Because we There's spoke, no quick fix. We spoke to Dave, David McWilliams a few moments ago and we're talking about it being a supply problem. So how do you solve that quickly? Well, David was talking about private housing primarily. Yeah. Now, in order to get private housing, in order to get a mortgage, you need a, a minimum income in a household of 70,000 euros. That's about 20% of the population. 80% of the population are going to need government support if they are going to access housing. And so that area of what we call social housing is the area that I would be con mostly concerned about. I think there are two issues there. We've got to prevent more and more people and families coming into homelessness. I think we need legislation to prevent the banks evicting families into homelessness. They shouldn't be allowed to evict families until those families have found alternative affordable accommodation. I know a family who were evicted, who were evicted from their home because the home was repossessed. They went into emergency uh, accommodation, family accommodation, and they still passed their former home two years later and it's still boarded up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is disgraceful.
So I think we need to prevent the banks and the vulture funds from evicting people. I think we need to expand the mortgage to rent scheme. I think that should be the normal way of dealing with a mortgage which is in, uh, which is in serious arrears. In Dublin there are 45,000 uh, households on the social housing waiting list and there are 42,000 permanently empty houses and apartments. What about the rent allowance increase? Fianna Fáil, uh, in their agreement with Fianna Gael, said that there would be 15% increases well, in some areas that were under pressure. Well, we've always called for an increase in the rent supplement, but I believe the 15% is, 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 is not just... It's worse than nothing. <laughs> There has been a drop since 2007 in the rent supplement of 28%, and yet rents now are back to their peak level of two, 2007, so there's a 28% gap. My fear is that if you increase the rent supplement by 15%, you're still not going to allow families to be able to pay the, mortgage, the, the, the rent, and you're going to use an awful lot of taxpayers' money so increase in it not by, achieving. Do you increase it by 28%? You increase it by 28% and you introduce rent controls mm -hmm. to prevent the landlords pushing up the rents uh, okay. accordingly. So okay. you introduce rent controls, which, which Alan Kelly wanted to do, to, to limit the rent increases to the consumer price index, but the Minister for Finance wouldn't let him okay. do it. On the rent allowance issue, you are set against increasing yep. that, aren't you? Yeah, and, and, and I'll say why, Father. There are 70,000 70, people on rent allowance. There are not 70,000 people who are at risk of homelessness. Now, if you increase 15 or 28 percent, you give th that money to everyone. It'll cost tens of millions of euro. For what? Use those tens of millions of euro to directly build, increase the supply of housing, both short-term, immediate, the prefabricated houses that were supposed to have come online as an emergency solution and a longer-term solution. Why spend tens of millions of euro to give 70,000 people, most of whom are not in any danger of homeless, homelessness, an increase in the rent allowance. Well, for, I agree with you that we need a massive increase in the building of social housing. So let's use the resources That's, for that. But I would estimate that over the last two years, at least 2,000 families have become homeless because they have been unable to pay the rent because the rent allowance simply did but, not but allow you know, them if, to if do that. If you've got a problem, you could go to your DSP office and you could say, I'm in an emergency situation, and your officer can, can, allow, can warrant an increase in the amount of rent allowance, but on a case-by-case -case basis. And that, you know, if you want to help people... You need to target it. The idea the, that you would hand over tens of millions of, of euro to uh, 70,000 people, the vast majority of whom are not at risk of homelessness. Why not use those 10 million euro, or those ten, tens of millions of euro, to start building and increase? Because we all agree the problem is about supply. Focus on building, increasing the supply. Well, I agree with you that families who do find themselves in difficulties paying the rent can go to the community welfare officer. But many families don't even know that they can go to the community sure. welfare officer. They have to go to an organisation called Threshold, a terrific organisation. Most of the families I deal with never heard of Threshold. Mm -hmm. So they don't even know about this possibility of getting it on a well, case-by-case. Let's, case, let's emphasize case it tonight. And that it people was never are in that advertised. situation. It's it there. Never, it is available to people. It was but, never you know, as I say, I think it would be really you know, helpful if we could focus the, the, the available resources on getting the supply and not saying, let's give 70,000 people, the vast majority of whom, let me stress okay. it again, are Dan, not in trouble. Dan, I, just want to go, I just want to bring um, Sinead in on this. It is a supply problem though and you know, it will take years to get the supply up to where it needs to be. Mm. So should we not put in emergency measures now in order to stop people becoming homeless, the people that yes, my very described? and this um, document does have some measures that seem to be very concrete. And indeed, the whole section on housing seems to have been fleshed out to a far greater degree than practically any other section within the document. So, for instance, there's going to be a new uh, arrears court set up. Now, I find judges in the recession courts are terribly sympathetic normally to homeowners who are being evicted. So unless you've somebody who's absolutely never engaging, hasn't paid in two years, you know, they're very reluctant to grant repossession orders. They do, and they have to on occasion. This court now is going to be somewhat more uh, tempered, so, uh, even more sympathetic, all, all that kind of thing. They, they've left the language a little bit fuzzy. However, what is key to me is that they are going to make, on a compulsory statutory basis, the mortgage to rent scheme. Uh, they're going to make sure that the banks who are about to evict people must bring that in and must offer it to people. Now, to me, 
That is one of the key solutions that has been badly mismanaged over the years. It just isn't offered. The banks, it suits them it, it, to a far greater extent to get the people out, get the property sold, and, or, or crystallise the debt straight away, or let it rumble on and hope to extract as much money out okay. of them as possible. Well, at least this is that on the scheme is excellent. At least this is on the agenda now. At least we have a minister with a portfolio, a housing portfolio. That, that may make a difference if he gets a proper budget. I mean, it's on the agenda years after, in reality, this tidal wave of homelessness and a housing crisis has been building and has hit in reality. So yes, we have a housing minister, and yes, we have a committee to deal with housing at the moment, but the question is the content of what the housing minister, what the housing committee are going to do. And if you read the document, um, yes, there's bits here and there, but fundamentally, I mean, the document does not use the word housing emergency, housing crisis, it refers to a housing shortage. And it's just, it's such a dramatic understatement when you have almost 100,000 families on the social housing waiting lists, when you have 2,000 children in emergency accommodation tonight, when you have tens of thousands of people facing, or more than that, facing mortgage crises. And like fundamentally, the document talks about creating a functioning housing market. And that's the problem. It's a market-based solution. The answer, it is a supply okay. problem, and the answer is for the state to intervene using the resource of NAMA and to build council and affordable homes, which is okay. not mentioned in the document. That's the key thing. We have much time left, but I just want to touch on housing. And Priscilla Lynch is here, a medical journalist. What are you, what, what's your sense from the noises we're hearing on health? We've got a brand new minister in that portfolio. Things may be done differently. What do you think? I think there's plenty of challenges ahead actually for him and with all the dithering over forming a government and all the arguing even tonight about Irish water, the health service is in a major crisis at the moment. Uh, earlier this week it was revealed that over 500,000 people across Ireland are waiting for an inpatient or an outpatient appointment in our hospitals. These are the worst numbers ever since these records actually began. And we're the government ministers and the politicians tonight calling for an intervention in this. Nowhere, again we're still arguing about Irish water. So there is a huge crisis there and there is major challenges facing. Simon Harris, who's the new Minister for Health, um, as he comes into government. In the programme for government, again, as Sinead said, it's quite aspirational. We've been told again that the HSE is going to be dismantled, mm -hmm. which we were told five years ago. And really, in reality, I think it's more about rebranding and restructuring it, which okay. is already happening um, as we speak. We've had hospital groups created now. We're being told okay. that they're going to be replaced by hospital trusts. So I think there's a lot of detail there. The good thing is that we've been told that there's multi-annual mm -hmm. budgets on the way okay. for the health service. All right, we'll leave it there, but just before we do, uh, James Lawless is here, new Fianna Fáil TD, and Gino Kenny beside you. Your hopes, in, in a, uh, very quickly, if you don't mind, James, for the priority issue that should be dealt with, in your opinion, as we go into this new government. Hmm. Well, I think, uh, first of all, I think the new arrangement that's been arrived at uh, has the potential to be very constructive. I think it's an opportunity for every party and every individual in the House to contribute to the debate. Um, I hope we'll have better quality of decision making. I think the, the issue with the previous government, uh, trust and arrogance, obviously, okay. were to the fore. And I think if we can tackle that, the minority government framework, I think it's done around the world, let's make it work in this country. Uh, and I think if we do that, we've, we've achieved something. All right. Please. And do you know your priority uh, as quick as you can? Housing, housing, housing. I mean, there's a crisis uh, beyond imagination. And if we don't um, address the situation, we are facing a catastrophe to be in this country. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to take a quick break. Stay with us for this Parents Please coming up after this. He's had such a hard start in life that we want something good for him.